Have you found yourself struggling to make art? Are you overwhelmed by color? Paintbrush problems got you down. Do you even know what a paintbrush is? Are you just terrible? Terrible. Well, the masters of the paint universe are here to help. Are here to help. So, you want to paint? Well, if you're watching this video, that means either A, you've watched all the true crime documentaries available on YouTube, B, you're a lost, tormented soul wanting to express the emotional anxieties of your introverted life with the big scary world, or C, you're actually looking to become a better artist. Nevertheless, we are here to help. As artists, we have dealt with all of the uncertainty, the self-doubt, the desperation, and most importantly, the anger at expensive supplies. We are here to guide you through the processes involved with becoming an artist, what materials to buy with sensible pricing, the skills involved in creating art, the elements and principles of art, and the fundamentals of the creative process. The three of us got our master's degrees in art and would like to share what we've learned with you. But who are we? Let's introduce ourselves. First up is Mustafa. He is an expert in photorealism. His favorite movie is Matilda. And he doesn't think Higgum was real. Our next artist is Brett, an expert in mixed media. He peaked in high school athletics and hasn't seen a scary movie since Ghostbusters, May 17th of 1993. Finally, Polo, an expert in self-portraits, a self-proclaimed salt lamp enthusiast who's still waiting to hear back from his audition to be the sixth Spice Girl. Now let's talk about materials. For this section, we will first be presenting a must-have list that covers the basics of what you'll need to get started. We will also suggest materials that you can additionally purchase to broaden your range of options. Our goal is to keep the must-have list affordable and reliable to balance cost and quality. As we introduce these materials, you'll notice a difference in the two lists. One is targeted towards working in acrylic, the other towards oil. This is mainly because acrylics are water-based and oils are, well, oil-based. So working with oils requires some additional supplies. The following materials apply to both acrylics and oils. The essential paints you'll need are titanium white, ultramarine blue, cadmium red deep, and naples yellow. These paint tubes generally come in two sizes. The best bang for your buck is to buy the larger size. We recommend doing this, but get whatever your budget will allow. You should also get a small tube of ivory black. We won't be using it very much, and that's why we're suggesting the smaller size. Dioxazine purple, viridian green, and cadmium orange would be the add-on paints that we'd recommend. For brushes, the series we recommend are Blix Scholastic Wonder White brushes. From personal experience, this brush series takes a lot of wear and tear. They're also synthetic, which makes them really easy to clean. But the best part about these brushes? They're cheap. We recommend getting these brushes in a size 4, 10, and 16. Make sure they're all flat and not round. Trust us on this, just trust us. But if you don't, here's a testimonial. There he is. Very good. There he is again. Very good. For a palette, you could buy a disposable one or one that an art store will offer. But from our experience, using a sheet of glass or plexiglass is great because it can be easily cleaned, so it's reusable. Likewise, a plastic plate is an alternative option. Speaking of cleaning, we also use lava soap as a final brush cleaner. We've noticed it's very effective, but over time it has a tendency to wear down the bristles. But there are special soaps made for cleaning your brushes. Again, we'll list everything in the description and just get what your budget allows. You'll also need a palette knife to mix the paint on that palette. We recommend something like this that's triangular or teardrop in shape. You're looking at about fork size. A plastic or metal one will do just fine, but the metal ones are easiest to clean. 
And finally, a squeeze bottle to have better control over the amount of paint thinner you use. Now you'll need a surface to create your wonderful works of art on. Get a paper pad. You'll want one with heavier paper weight so the paint doesn't soak through. We'll list options in the description that will work for you. Masking tape is the next thing you'll need. Inch and a half to two inches in width is best. But what's most important is that it's white or light beige. We'll let you know why later. If you've chosen oils, you'll need a few extra things. The first is a refined paint thinner. We use Gamsol by Gamblin, but an alternative, budget-friendly option is Weber's Odorless Turpenoid. As a precaution, double-check that the solvents you get say odorless. Most should be. The best part about these products is they can also double as your brush cleaner. Something with a screw-top lid to store your paint thinner will also be needed. And remember, if you choose to work in oils, you're going to want to work in a well-ventilated space. Something as simple as an open window works. With your supply list purchased, you're well on your way to creating art. Be sure to check out our next video, Setting Up, to get started. Thanks for watching our first episode, and if you're seeing it on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. If you're watching this on another platform, that's really weird, because I didn't upload it there. Unless. Now let's talk about materials. For this section, we will present... Nope. Nope. As a precaution, double check that the solvents you get are orderless. <laughs> Orderless. No order. Action. <laughs> it's so hard! On. There he is. They good.